So we'll get started very soon. How's everybody's weekends? Mm -hmm. Oh. How's it going, Ashmi? <clears throat> Excellent. Yeah. Good morning, uh, Chen Shi. I'll just wait a few more minutes just for uh, anyone else who is going to come in. But yeah, then then we'll get started, and uh, we'll we're going to go through. Monopolistic competition and oligopoly today. So that's going to be so a lot of the market structures for the most part today. I think we'll just wait a few more minutes. Ugh. I think we'll start. So we're going to go through monopolistic competition and why monopolistic competitors earn only a normal profit in the long run, why monopolistic competition delivers neither productive nor allocative efficiency, and then we're going to go through how monopolistic competition provides product differentiation uh, to compensate for not providing economic efficiency. So with monopolistic competition, there's a lot of sellers. So small market shares. The products are differentiated in terms of products, type, service, location, brand names, and packaging, and there's some control of price. So there's no collusion in monopolistic competition because there's too many firms. So they they there's too many firms. So they're unable to restrict output and set prices uh, because there's too many firms. There's too much competition. So uh, so actions by one firm will not trigger a response. So a price cut by a single firm may result in increased sales. Yeah. So there's easy entry and exit. It's pretty easy to enter compared to oligopoly or monopoly. The companies are small. The economies of scale are few. Capital requirements are low. And uh, there's non-price competition in terms of advertising, and then the firm's demand curve shifts to the right and becomes less elastic. So industry concentration, the four firm concentration ratio is output of the four largest firms divided by total output in the industry. So Herfindahl in index is the sum of squared market shares. So you add up all of these market shares and square them, like square, square each of them and add them together. So the occupational clothing industry has the highest Herfindahl index. So uh, the so that's that's very monopolistically competitive. And then plastic bagging industry is second, feed industry is third, fish products is fourth. And the higher the Herfindahl index, the more monopolistically competitive the industry is. So then uh, the demand curve of each firm is highly, but not perfectly elastic. And uh, this leads to monopolistic competition being distinguished from monopoly and perfect competition. And then there are two reasons why the demand curve of a firm in monopolistic competition is not perfectly elastic, like a PC firm has uh, low, fewer rivals. So like there's not as many uh, competitors in Per monopolistic competition compared to perfect competition. And then its products are differentiated, so they're not perfect substitutes. So monopolistic and competitive firms maximize profit through setting output at marginal revenue equals marginal cost. So that's that's how they maximize profit. 
um, in this in any market. And then the so firms will enter a profitable industry and exit an unprofitable one. So if if a if an industry is making profits, firms will enter. If an industry is not making profits, firms will exit. So that's uh, then also they they combine explicit and implicit costs together. So the so even so cash costs and uh, non cash costs. So like you know the cost of not going to the cost of not working is factored in the cost of missed opportunities is factored in as well so mr equals mc is this point this is where they produce any market to maximize profits yeah so they always want to produce it marginal revenue equals marginal cost because that maximizes profits So their positive profits could happen over long term if there's a lot of product if there's con if there's constant product differentiation like if products uh, constantly uh, are different then uh, it's going to be po the profits going to be positive in the long run and also the there could be there has to be high investment like a certain uh, there needs to be amount of a high amount of investment to allow for product differentiation. So, like to make profits positive in long run for a product for monopolistic competition, products must be different and expensive to make long term. So that you must have both to, um, you know, make it work. And then productive inefficiency is price is greater than the average total cost. Allocative efficiency is price is greater than marginal cost. Uh, so uh, excess capacity is the gap between minimum average total cost and output. So productive variety. Normal product profit is not very satisfying for firms. Firms constantly manage price, product, and advertising, better product differentiation, better advertising. The consumer benefits by a greater array of choices and better products, types and styles, brands and quality. So the last word, higher wages, more mixed restaurants. So in the monopolistic competitive restaurant market, higher wages favor bigger chain restaurants over small mom and pop operations. So, so um, you need, so like, McDonald's would benefit off of higher wages compared to um, like a small uh, non-chain restaurant. So like McDonald's has profits basically through collusion. So that's a big thing that they do. So oligopoly, there's a few, few pro large producers, concentrated market power, homogeneous or differentiated project products, um, control over price, they can control price. There's Entry barriers, and mergers, economy of scale, important. So, um, I'll ask you what uh, what's can you think of any examples of an oligopoly that you've seen in the in your uh, in in your experience? Have you seen any examples of an oligopoly? That's good. Yeah, Chen Chi, excellent. Yeah, um, oil company. Yeah, oil companies. Yeah, that's true. So they're they're an oligopoly because they uh, they merge they band together to set prices at a point where they maximize profits. So they set it where MR equals MC, and you see it with gas prices. They're focused on MR equals MC, so they're trying to maximize uh, profits. That's great. And then oligopolistic industries, so four firm concentration ratio, the percentage of total industry sales counted by the four largest firms. So 40% or more to be an oligopoly. So like if if the companies account for 40% or of or more of the sales, then it's an oligopoly. <laughs> so 
the Herfindahl index is the four firm concentration ratio. Um, and it shows the, yeah, it shows like how oligopolistic the industry is or isn't. So, So I'm going to, uh, so tobacco products have the highest turf null index, then brewery products and potato chip, pretzel, and popcorn products. So game theory is the study of how people behave in strategic situations. Oligopoly pricing behavior has the characteristics of certain types of strategies, such as poker, chess, and bridge. So the games have four basic components, the players, the rules, the possible strategies, and chaos. So the prisoner's dilemma is a way to show it. Uh, the, uh, it was, so it shows, uh, how it's hard to cooperate when two cannot communicate with each other, even when the best interests are to communicate, to cooperate. So in this case, like Prisoner's Lama has two competitors, two strategies, and it, so, uh, so basically they can confess both of them and they both get four. If they not can, if they if one doesn't confess and the other confesses, the one that doesn't confess gets twelve, and the one confesses that gets one. But if they both don't confess, they get two. So usually, what happens is in this case, uh, they they eventually both of them don't confess because if one of them confesses and the other doesn't, they get twelve. But the problem is, if they both confess, they both get two. So um, they would get less if they both confess. So um, that's a problem that can happen. So yeah, like they, the problem is uh, like if they did confess, they'd only get one year in prison. Uh, if one did confess and the other didn't confess, uh, the one that confessed gets one year in prison. The one that doesn't confess gets 12 years in prison. So, but if they both, um, if they both don't confess, they get two years in prison. If they both confess, they get four years in prison. So it's, it's a challenge. Uh, so the Nash equilibrium in this case, is they both confess because uh, they, they both like, because um, if they confess and the other doesn't confess, they would get one year in prison, but they will both confess because they think the other won't confess. So I'm gonna bring up a new activity. I'm just gonna, so the, so in this case, the, if rare air prices are high, and uptown price is high. Uh, they will both get. They will both have twelve dollars here. And then if rare price is low, you get fifteen. Uptown gets six. And then um, if they both price low, eight and eight. So price low is Nash equilibrium. That's where they'll go. They want to compete with respect to price. So. This will lead to lower prices and lower profits. It's good for consumers, but not to the oligopolist profits. So this happens when uh, the companies are competing. They're trying to get trying to get more customers. So they they lower their price. So they get more customers, and then they both lower their price, and um, it'll be lower for consumers. And that's usually what happens. So oligopolists can increase their profits and uh, change their pricing strategies. So what they could do is they could do a cartel where they both price high to make higher profits. And that's what they call a cartel, a collusion. So they both price high to make higher profits. So um, they may collude um, and not uh, reduce prices to compete. So in that case, they both... Uh, they both, um, yeah, they both set the price high 
to increase their profits. But then the problem with that is people cheat on this collusive pricing agreement through they lower their price to, comp to get more market share from the other companies. So they lower the price to take more customers. And then um, that that's the problem with collusion because some companies cheat and lower their price. So the problem is um, there's a price war. Uh, so they start to they start to um, compete through reducing price. So if if they're colluding, if they're in a collusion situation, they 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 act as a monopoly in that case. So like if two companies come together to collude, they act as a monopoly basically, and they set margin revenue for marginal costs. So collusion is illegal in Canada. Um, however. Internationally, the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Companies, OPEC, they they provide collusion in the oil market and uh, they get around it because it's international. So uh, the OPEC nations produce about 34% of the world's oil and 34% of the oil sold in the world market. So it's, it's almost, it's basically a cartel. So the problems with collusion are that there's demand and cost differences number of firms cheating, recession, new entrants, and legal obstacles. So oligopolists would rather not compete on the basis of price and may become involved in price collusion. So Canadian advertising has re recently exceeded $9 billion annually. Worldwide advertising has reached over $550 billion. So advertising is positive because there's a it's a low-cost way of providing information to customers. It enhances competition. It speeds up technological progress and allows firms to develop economies of scale. So advertising can be manipulative and it can be misleading, which is a problem because you don't, misleading claims can be problematic because uh, it's false advertising. And then consumers may pay high, higher prices for a good because... Uh, that good is advertised to them, while other goods that aren't advertised are not being bought. So top 10 brands based on four criteria, the brand's market share within category, uh, the brand's appeal across age groups, nationalities, loyalty of customers to the brand, and the ability of the brand to stretch products beyond the new original products. So um, all of these categories here, these are mapped by Apple, Google, Coca-Cola, Microsoft, IBM, Toyota, Samsung, General Electric, McDonald's, and Amazon. So they have high market share. They have high appeal across the world. Um, there's a lot of brand and loyalty. And then the brand uh, applies to um, products, uh, like more products instead of just the original product. So all oligopolies are inefficient because price is greater than minimum average total costs and price. So... Um, so customers are missing out on, on value because they're paying more than what's, what it costs. So in this case, the national equilibrium is, uh, the international strategy in this case. So repeated games is a game that recurs. That usually happens in competition. So like repeated games are through like so examples of Coca-Cola and Pepsi, Boeing and Airbus, Walmart and Target, Nike and Adidas. They're constantly repeating the game because they're constantly competing on price and product quality and other factors because they're they're in the same industry and they're always competing for customers. The sequential game is when firms apply strategy sequentially. Final outcome depends on who moves first. Rival must respond. First mover advantage or advantage for, 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 for a firm that's first, maybe better prepared, maybe preempt empty arrival. So 